morning, everyone. Vloggy Poncho here. We're back with another daily vlog. I say good morning. I'm filming this at 3 p.m., so, you know. It's it's a weekend. I'm sleeping in. I've got other things I'm working on in the morning. I like having the, the deadline during the week where I have to have the video done before class. It gives me sort of this time frame where I have to work in and get things done. But having more editing time today means that I was able to prepare a more in-depth episode for you. And so today, well, let's do, let's do the stuff first. Today is January, uh, Sunday, January 20th. It's a wonderful day, weighing in 182 pounds, and I think my month of meals is actually helping me. I'm, I'm noticing that I'm trimming a little bit of fat, not much. I'm going to need to add exercise, I think, next month. So we'll, we'll slowly work into it. It's all about a lifestyle change. And then today's meals. Uh, I just had a spicy brekkie, and I'm going straight to dinner because I slept in. Uh, I'm having, I had a date with Maple tonight, so I'm going to have a burrito at Moe's. Good stuff. Goal progress. Snooze right through my dreams this morning. Nothing to report. But I do have a lot to talk about in this video, so let's get right to it. Uh, in this episode, I want to talk about the problem with Pokemon and I, I, a couple gripes that I have that I've noticed over, over the years of playing Pokemon. Thanks, these, it basically comes down to these rules that they feel like, I don't know if it's Nintendo or if it's Game Freak or what, but there are these rules that they feel like they have to follow where every Pokemon generation has to do this or has to do that. And I, I don't, I, I, this episode, I'm just going to focus on the Pokemon. The Pokemon themselves. I, I could talk about the the way that it has to work where every every region has to have eight gyms. The kid has to start with a rival. And now in the, in the new ones, you have to have a, two rivals or a rival and a friend. Uh, and then you always, t uh, all the towns always always named for some theme. They can't just pick interesting names. Uh, and then the Elite Four is always four. And then there's a champion. They have not changed the format at all. And there's a lot to talk about there. But in this episode, I just want to talk about the Pokemon and the Pokemon design choices that they've made over the years. So, let me get out of the way of my canvas here. The first thing I want to talk about is the first rule that it seems like they're, they're having to follow is that every generation has to have a cat. Like, look at this. Well, why is this? I guess it's really not a big deal until you realize that they're pretty much useless Pokemon. None of these cats has stats that are good enough to merit it being on a team just for its battle potential. These Pokemon are only in the game because people like cats. <laughs> and it's that kind of fan service that sort of detracts from the competitive quality of the gameplay. Now, granted, Meowth is his own character, but that's because of the way they took it in the anime. If you look at the other Meowths, like there's an episode where uh, Meowth is involved with several others in sort of a gang of Meowths in, the, in a, some city, I think. Uh, they're all just normal cats, and it's, there's nothing special about them. It's only that one Meowth that can talk or do anything interesting. So when you look at this group, you don't see a lot of potential here. The first three, uh, you got Generations 1, 3, and 4 had just normal types. Generation 5 shook it up and made a dark type. That's, a, that's, a, that's sort of a ploy they're going to be doing in a few of these examples, where they have a normal type, and then they say, hey, let's make it something, something that looks very similar, but we'll make it a dark type, so people think it's different. And it's the same thing. So every generation has a cat, and they're all pretty much useless. The next rule that they seem like they, they're just convinced that they have to follow is that you have to have bugs in the beginning of the game. Why does every game have to start out with you killing a bunch of bugs? Couldn't they do something different? The, the, the opening area of the game doesn't have to be filled... It does not have to be a bug-filled forest. Uh, there are other options uh, for them to start the game off. And I, I'm not creative enough to really give a good justification for this, but it seems like normal types and bug types are the only ones that they're comfortable putting in early in the game. You could start out with an area that's just full of grass types, or an area maybe that's full of ground types at the beginning. Maybe the kid lives in the desert. I mean, he doesn't have to live in this boring-ass town so you can save the desert and water areas for later. Shake it up a little bit. Maybe he lives up north, and the whole beginner region is just full of ice-type Pokemon. That would be interesting, but the reason they don't do it is because the starters are always the same three types, and we'll get down to that later. And so having normal and bug-type Pokemon early in the game makes it relatively easy for any of the starters to get a little bit of training early on. And I also want to point out that a lot of these bugs look alike. So look at Cricketot, Suwaddle, uh, what's that one's name? Spinarak, and Weedle. They all have basically the same eyeballs. And then the other three, Ladybug, Caterpie, and Wurple, they all have the same eyes as well. And then they got the multi-legs thing going on. They all have stuff on top of their heads. So, I mean, some of them even have what look like very, very similar things on top of their heads. Like the three of them that have spikes there, Weedle, Spinarak, and Wurple. So it's like, well, you know, they're not really being even creative in the bugs that they're putting into the game. So, why bother? 
do something different. That's what I'm, that's really what I'm asking for is do something different. Every gen doesn't have to be the same. And then another thing that they do early on in the game, and, or even later on, is uh, in one case, is dogs. They have they had cats. We gotta have dogs now. We gotta have Pokemon for the dog people. And in the same in the same vein, they're all pretty much useless. None of these Pokemon belongs on a competitive battling team. This is not the kind of Pokemon that you hang on to and it's all the way till the Elite Four. I mean, maybe you could argue that Stoutland is a good enough mixed attacker to, to just to round off a team, but there are better options. It really, none of these dogs are, are in the game so because they're so awesome. They're in the game because they play some role in an anime episode like Snubble, or just or just for them to be another Pokemon for Team Rocket to use like Kuchaina and Mikaina. So again, it's not not being very creative in the Pokemon design. It's just, it's just a dog and various different <laughs> different versions of dogs. So why why can't it be something else? And then, probably even worse than the cats or dogs, is the rats. And these, these are always Pokemon that you encounter early game, and they're always normal type, and they always suck. And sometimes they're Pokemon that uh, Team Rocket will take up, which because they seem to have a proclivity towards using Pokemon that totally suck. But these rats, so you got the Rattata in Generation 1. And then I gotta say, Generation 2 was a little bit more creative. Generation 2 didn't have a cat, and Generation 2 here, instead of having a rat, has a, a ferret kind of thing. And then I guess Gen 3, what is that supposed to be? A beaver? But it's like, what? And then Generation, uh, I guess it's at 4. I don't even, I think it's Generation 4, actually. And then Gen 5, you've got, it's got freaking pat rat. It's got rat in the name again. So they can't even stay away from the fact that they know it's a rat. And look at the, look at all, look at all the teeth on them. They all have the same <laughs> bug of teeth. Easy to identify the rats early in the game. And then, oh, jeez, I don't even... Do I really even have to point out that there's too many freaking birds? Look at this. This is not half of the, of the birds in, this, in the Pokemon series. And again, Gen 2 is the only one to be creative where they had an owl instead of just the rest of them that are just, they could all be the same kind of bird. Like Pydove and Starly, I couldn't even tell them apart. I realized about halfway through putting, making these images that I had them switched around. <laughs> they weren't even lined up with the right evolutions because they just, they look like the same Pokemon. I mean, tell me that Pydove couldn't evolve into Staravia. Like, it's the same thing. They're practically identical. And then in Gen 1, and, and, and this is, a, okay, in Gen 1, you've got the five of them over there, and there were a couple more, like Farfetch'd that I left out, single evolutions. And what is this? This is another rule. Why do they all have to be normal and flying? Why can't we have Pokemon that are just flying types? Why do they have to be normal and flying? It doesn't make sense to me. And out of this, out of this whole page, probably the only Pokemon that you actually want to use in a competitive battling team, maybe Pidgeot, Probably Braviary. And the whole rest of them are just fodder. They appear early in the game, other than, other than Rufflet and Braviary. They all appear early in the game, and they're just more normal flying types for you to go at in the first region all the normal types are. Like, come on, get a little more creative. And, and stop being a... Like, why, why is it that they have to be normal and flying? Why can't they just be flying? I've never had anyone give me a good reason for why they're all hybrids. No pure, there's no pure type. There's no just pure flying Pokemon in any of the Pokemon games. Any Pokemon that's part flying is either always has a subtype. It's flying and something else. And even the ones that are just birds, they're flying and normal. It's like, why, why does that have to be? Well, why, why don't they do something different in Gen 6? And then, of course, you've got the legendary trios. And this isn't even all of them. Well, why does it have to be trios? And why do they have to add so many new legendaries every generation? In the first one, you had the legendary trios, and you had Mew and Mewtwo. It, it must just be so that they can make movies, right? It's, it's, it's so that they, make, they can make more money by making more Pokemon movies. And all of these have to focus on some new legendary they added. It's like, oh, we got Mew and Jirachi and Celebi and just... Uh, they're all the same Pokemon! It's the same Pokemon over and over. It just, oh, it's a weird little floaty thing. It's a psychic type. Yeah, it's the same one again. Um, so they're not changing anything. And here, I, I've, I've been generous with them here. I've given the black and white two. Uh, images for Landorus, Thunderous, and whatever the third one is called. Tornadus, I think. Uh, in, in black and white, they all basically look the same. They're practically palette swaps. And now in Gen 2, I guess somebody complained and they, they made them all into weird looking things. Which, honestly, it looks like, the bottom one looks like he's trying to be a legendary beast, and the top one looks like he's trying to be a, a bird. So, I, I don't know. It's kind of, it's like they totally lost their creativity, especially in terms of legendaries now. They had three legendaries that were just palette swaps of each other. And then another weird thing I've noticed is, and I don't know, I, I understand the appeal for this one. 
uh, is that every generation has a Pikachu. Now, it's a little bit a little bit strange, but it makes and this one's the one that makes the most sense to me. I can understand why they do it. It's because people like cute Pokemon. People fell in love with Pikachu partly because it was so freaking adorable. And so in Gen 1, you've got Pikachu and Raichu. And then Gen 2 introduces Pichu. In Gen 3, you've got Plusle and Minon, which... Do they not look exactly like Pichu? How did they... How did that design get past the, the editor? It's like, hey, you know you've got two Pokemon in here that are almost identical, and they both look just like Pichu? Like, they, surely they knew. Surely in Gen 3, when they put in Plusle and Minon, I think they were actively thinking, okay, we need another Pikachu for this generation. Because look at how similar it looks to, to, to Pichu. There's no way that was an accident. And then in Gen 4, they were like, okay, people are starting to notice that we're doing this Pikachu thing every time, so let's fake him out, let's make it a squirrel instead of a mouse. You know, it's so much different now. But it's got the same thing. It's still got the circles on its cheeks. It's still got the, they all have the exact same eyes. Did you notice that? They all have the exact same eyes. Just black with a white dot in them, no color. And then it's got the same patterns. It's got the, it's got the big tail sticking out in back. Just compare Pachirisu and Pikachu. I mean, it's, they're a pile top away from being practically identical. And then in Generation 5, they went back to doing yellow and black again. And it's, and it's a flying squirrel this time. And again, they're all really adorable. <laughs> but other than Pikachu or Raichu, maybe, you, you've never had any of them on your team. And with Pikachu, it would be with a light ball. So really, none of them are that useful. But they're, just, they're in there just to be another Pikachu for another generation. And I'm waiting to see, in Gen 6, how many of these things continue. How many more rats are they going to add? Is there going to be a dog? Is there going to be a cat? Are they going to add a bunch more normal flying hybrids? And will there be a pseudo-Pikachu? Because I'm willing to bet that at least four of those five will come true. I mean, I'm going to lay it down right now. So after Gen 6 comes out, you can come back to this video and tell me if I was wrong. So I don't think I will be. And then, probably the biggest similarity that everyone's thinking, well, why hasn't he mentioned this yet? The starters. This is the one where they seem like they've, they've really limited themselves, and I don't understand why. So in the first gen, they came up with this really good idea where the three Pokemon that you could choose to start the game with will have a type trio, trio going, where one does super effective on the other, and the other does super effective on the third, and it makes this cycle. So you have fire on double on grass, grass double on water, water double on, on fire. And that makes sense, that's a good design choice. But to do that every generation? Why not change it? There are other trios in the in the in the type list. We got 17 types to choose from. There are other trios that you can do with that three super effectives. Now, if you're if you're limiting it to super effective one direction and half effectiveness the other direction, it gets a little bit more complicated, and there are fewer options. But there are more of them out there. And here, the the lack of creativity is most noticeable in the starters because that's the Pokemon that everybody knows about. So let me just point a few things out. Turtwig really wishes it was Chikorita. And you've got uh, Osh or what's his name? Do uh, freaking Oshawott and Primplup. They're practically identical. Look at the two of them. They have the exact same colors. They use the same eyes. They're, they're, they're so similar. It's crazy. And then you've got Chimchar. His evolved form just wishes it was a Blaziken. It's essentially the same Pokemon again. And then Smugleaf is just a Trico with... A more angular design, essentially the same Pokemon again. So I do have to say that it seems like the, the creativity peaked in Gen 2. They got pretty creative in Gen 2 with, with Cyndaquil. F look, look at the f list of fire Pokemon. Which of them looks just like Cyndaquil? None of them. Cyndaquil stands out from the rest of the group. None of the rest of them look like that, that's design on the back. I mean, maybe you could say he's most similar to probably Bulbasaur, where he's got the thing on his back. But he's got blue in his design. His primary colors, he's got gray on the front and blue, or I think it's tan on the front, and blue on the back. What other fire type Pokemon has the blue on it? So they got much more creative than before. And then, you know, Totodile and Chikorita were okay. Totodile was interesting. The Crocodile was nice. Of course, now there's tons of other Crocodile Pokemon in later generations, but still. And I do have to say, on, on, an, on a, a more cheerful note, it looks like the starters for Gen 6 are showing some creativity. I'm, I'm hoping and praying, and I'm waiting to see what the secondary types will be, if they have any. Because I, I haven't learned their names yet. But that frog one in the middle, I think his name's Froakie. Uh, he's looking pretty cool. If, if, I think his evolved form, if his evolved form is actually a badass frog, I already know what I'm going to be starting with in Gen 6. And then the other two, 
the, they got the first grass type Pokemon to have a, a predominance of, or the first grass type starter to have a, a predominance of brown in his color palette. So it just it looks different than the previous generations. And then when you look at the Firefox from this generation, although I'm scared it'll just be another Vulpix clone, like we have enough of those, right? It looks like there might be going in a different direction because it's almost entirely yellow with just a little bit of red. It doesn't look anything like the other fire starters. They, they, they sort of stand out from each other. And I'm pleased with this. I'm, I'm really hoping that the move sets are, are, are different or new. They have some kind of new signature move that's actually useful. Or, or they give them subtypes that they haven't had before. Just not another fire and fighting, please. You know? So, we do what we can. Those are my complaints for the generations. So, just so this video isn't entirely me bashing on what is a very successful franchise, and I understand, obviously, this is work for them. They've, they, they've sold five generations like this, and pe some people complain it's the same thing. But there's enough new and different Pokemon that these ones that are just clearly clones of earlier ones tend to be overlooked. People don't complain about it much. But I think it's when you start looking at it, you can see a whole lot of parallels from one generation to the next. And so, just so this video isn't entirely me being a jerk, I'm going to actually do something constructive and suggest something for Gen 6. So, it's obviously, it's already been done, so this is not how it's going to be. But, and I don't expect anyone to actually see this and take it. But here's what I would do if I were in charge of the starters for the next generation. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, first off, I know this is kind of weird to look at it at first, but bear with me, I'll explain it. So I've used the EV sprites to sort of demonstrate what I'm thinking here. I want there to be five starters. And uh, I got those that ghost and fighting sprites from... Uh, a website. I'll link it in the description. So, no, from a website. No. Yeah, the link will be in the description. It was some Pokemon forum I found it on. Pretty good surprise, actually, I think. So here's what the here's how the design works. Is you have five starters, and you can. And I'm not saying they actually should be Eevee and its evolutions. I'm just having them stand in for a normal type, a psychic, a dark, a ghost, and a fighting type. Because I think it's a it's a it's an interesting group. It's not a perfectly balanced group. But it's, an, it's nuanced, and it's more interesting. And imagine if the next gen, instead of starting out with just you and your rival, it's a classroom. Like, you, you, you never see, there are schools in a, couple of the in a couple of the editions. I think in Emerald there's a school you go in. I know in Gen 5 you battle Sharon in a school. So why is, it, why is the protagonist never, sh never shown in school? Okay, well how about we go to a new region where when you get to 8th grade, everybody gets a Pokemon, and it's part of your education, is learning how to treat Pokemon, because they're so involved, they're so important to the Pokemon universe, you have to know how to deal with them. And so it's you and your four classmates. So there's five of you. And they don't have to characterize all of them, maybe you only see a couple of them, like the ones that are related to your type, or most strongly related to your type that you choose. But there will be five of them that you can start out with. And maybe it would be random. Maybe you wouldn't know which, of, which two or three of the others you'd be battling throughout the game. That could be give it a whole other level of replay value if your rival, if you don't, if you don't know what Pokemon your rival is going to have, that would be so cool. I mean, even if it was just one of them, if they picked it from the other four at random, that would be really neat. Instead of just you always knowing, okay, well, if I pick Charmander, my rival's going to have Squirtle every time, and he's always going to trump me. What a jerk! So this would make it a little more creative. So here's how the the, the, the diagram works. If you haven't figured it out yet, the green arrows go from one Pokemon to another, and that would indicate super effective damage, based on the types, assuming they're all just pure types. And then black arrows are for just standard effectiveness. The purple arrows, uh, where there's no effect, and then the red arrows are where it's half, half as effective. And the little, the little short arrows next to each Pokemon is them attacking their own type. So normal on normal, psychic on psychic, whatever. So this group's not perfectly balanced. If you were to, to look at the whole crew, you'd, you'd sort of, after a, after a little bit of analysis, you'd conclude that the dark one would be the best. Because it has two types that it does super effective to, ghost and psychic, two that it does have to, dark and fighting, and one that it does normal to, which is normal type. So it's coming out with two doubles, two halves, and one one. And so it doesn't do no damage to any of them. Whereas the other four have a purple arrow going one way or the other. So... Fighting can't hit Ghost, Ghost can't hit Normal, Normal can't hit Ghost, Psychic can't hit Dark. But Dark can hit all the others, so it's a little bit of difference there. Maybe maybe a little bit of change can be made to the, to the Spectrum to make this a more balanced group. But honestly, I think it's interesting that they're not, they're not all exactly equal. And I think the randomness that I suggested earlier would make that even more acceptable. Because 
if you pick the normal type, you're just hoping, oh man, I hope Arrival doesn't have the ghost type. That first battle's going to suck because you can't hit him or whatever. <laughs> but I'm sure there's ways around that. Uh, they wouldn't have to make it a problem. Or maybe they had brought in a bunch of Pokemon, and your rival might end up choosing the same Pokemon as you. How cool would that be? You choose the ghost type thinking you're real cool, and then he chooses the ghost type as well, and you're both hitting super effective hits in your first battle. You know, how cool would that be? And why not start the Pokemon off with a, with a stab move? Why do they all have to start off knowing Tackle? That's another thing that I can talk about in the whole video, is why do the moves have to be the way they are? But tell me what you think about this. And obviously it's not just... You, when you're picking a starter, you don't just consider how it affects the other starters. You're also considering how it affects the rest of the game. And so when I say, oh, the dark type has an advantage, but how often are you going to, 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 to come across psychic and ghost types in the main game? Not a whole lot. They're not that common. I mean, they're much, certainly much less common than other types like water, grass, and normal. So maybe you want to choose the ghost type so that all the normal types in the game can't affect you. Or maybe you go for the fighting type so you can do double on the normal types. It's not just what you're thinking about in your starter. So I think that these types, this, this situation would give you a lot more to think about. And if there were any randomness at all introduced to it in terms of what rivals you would have or what the Pokemon your rivals would have, I think that would greatly increase the replay value, and it would be so, so cool. Like, I, I want to see a hack where somebody does this. Or maybe even better, a hack where you can pick, like, from 17 starters. You can have any type starter that you want. I think that would be really cool. And I, I don't understand, the final point is that I don't get it. I don't understand why they have to limit themselves so much. They can make Gen 6 feel like the same game as Gen 5, but they can change the battle dynamic. They didn't seem to flinch much when they changed the whole uh, special attack versus physical attack from based on type to based on move. And that was a huge change. If they're open to that sort of thing, then it changes like how many starters you have to choose from, or, you know, just why does it have to be a legendary trio? It seems like they could make those changes, but they've chosen not to. They, they're deliberately trying to make the same game over and over, and I think that they would still sell just as many copies as it, if they made the game different. But, you know, I'm not an expert on this. I don't make video games. That's just my two cents as a gamer. So, take it for what it's worth. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow morning.